Ladies and gentlemen, it is my privilege and honor to welcome you all to the Allianz Tower, one of Italy's highest buildings, for a very special evening. An evening that many of you have been waiting a long time for, the FIS Announcements Gala Evening. Now, throughout the night, and for all of our viewers that are joining us online around the globe, we will be whisking you and showing you some of the candidates' best of moments as part of their bid to host the forthcoming World Championships of 2026 and 2027. We'll take you to Oberstdorf, we'll take you to Montefon. From Montefon, we'll whisk you over to some wonderful pictures from Falun in Sweden, and then, of course, those great Alpine resorts, Cramontana, Garmisch, up to the fjords of Norway, and, of course, to the Pyrenees and Andorra. We have a fabulous night installed for you to be a very special evening indeed, crowning it with new World Championship host resorts and cities. Now, my name is Nick Fellows. I've been a part of the winter sports world for over 30 years now as a commentator and broadcaster, and it's an absolute pleasure to be here this evening. But, of course, it's possibly more important for our president to welcome you all personally. So please give a round of applause and welcome to the stage for tonight's gala evening our FIS president, Mr Johan Eliash. Thank you very much for that uh, very nice introduction, Nick. And uh, also from my side, a very warm welcome to everyone joining us today for this very special evening. And hello to all guests in the Matterhorn of Italy, the Allianz Tower in Milano. It's good to see you all in person. And also hello to everyone at home joining us on television or online. It's good to feel your interest and your commitment back home. We're very excited and we look forward to a great evening tonight. The Snow Kids Awards are part of our Bring Children to the Snow campaign. The awards are held every two years and recognize the best initiatives from around the world to bring the next generation to snow sports. Since its inception, the Snow Kids Award has directly supported 28 different programs in 22 different countries. Kids and their passion for snow sports are the foundation for its sustainable development. That's why we're here. The enthusiasm ignited at a young age by our future. The experience children collect then have a long-lasting impact and determine whether or not they will continue with the sport and feel joy doing it. Therefore, the first contact is of the utmost importance. It sets the future. Now, the projects that have been implemented as part of the Snow Kids program cover nine countries from three continents. In total, the programs from this year's award have brought over 690,000 children to the snow. This is a testament to the many creative and inspiring ways of bringing children to the snow. And it illustrates the dedication and commitment with which organizers around the globe are working on sharing the passion for our sport and 
paving the way for its future. Now, the World Championships are highlights of uh, our seasons. Competitions all athletes and their support teams are striving towards. Competitions that our fans are looking forward to. All candidates presented visionary plans and would implement very much memorable events. That is great news for our sport. And I would like to, thank the to take the opportunity to thank all candidates for their hard work. I feel the excitement in the room. I know there is excitement in all possible host cities. And I think we're all waiting with great anticipation for the final decision of the FIS Council. So thank you very much for joining us tonight. A big congratulations again to all the winners. And I wish you a great evening. Johan, thank you so much for those words. <laughs> Johan, if you would like to join me on the stage over here, we're going to bounce from stage to stage, because as you can clearly see, there's a big wall between the two sides of the building. There is no A or B, no cheap seats or expensive seats. It's all <laughs> the real thing. It's just the design of this wonderful building. Let's stick with the Snow Kids program and story. I thought we'd be a little bit cheeky and slip it in tonight because it's something that truly is very close to all of our hearts. It's the future. And I, as a journalist and a broadcaster, was particularly warmed to hear that after two or three years of decreasing numbers of youngsters on the mountain, they are now back on the climb. Kids are going skiing and snowboarding again like they were before. And I think if we, as the FIS, committees, family, and just about anybody who loves the mountains can keep playing our part, we can keep seeing those numbers go up, then we will be in a much healthier place for the future. So every two years, awards are created. Nice to see the awards because there are so many people doing so many brilliant things everywhere. But hopefully these awards will grow, just like other ceremonies do, to encourage more resorts, more federations, more bodies to help the youngsters, whilst we all love the big stuff at the top of the pyramid, the racing, the world championships. But at the bottom, I think the more we do, the better. So we would like to thank and we've got them in eighth position in reverse order. So I'd like to give them a name check. Sorry, this thing in my ear. I'd like to give them a quick name check, if you don't mind. But then the winners, who have been voted the winners, would please come up on stage to receive a trophy and a diploma. So eighth position was my first snow day in Spain by the Cerro uh, Grados, I hope I pronounced that correctly, ski school, in seventh position Holland with Moe's Winter Sports Club teaching kids for the first time ever in snow halls, indoors, not outdoors, the lowlands playing their part to keep youngsters coming to the mountains with an enjoyable experience. Fifth, we have the Ski School Education Programme from Andorra, the Bill Koch Youth Ski League in New England in the USA, Nordic cross-country skiing, it's not all about Alpine. Then we have our top three, Shred Kids Germany, a nationwide tour in over 11 locations, giving free lessons and more. Snow moves, full online courses for parents and kids, and our winners. And this is a lovely award, I think. It is called Everyone on Snow from Sweden, coordinated by the Swedish Ski Association, that were the winners in 2020, and they've won again, because they literally have got thousands of kids that never dreamt of becoming skiers and going to the mountains up in the hills. And on behalf of the Everyone on Snow programme, I would like to invite Mr. Ola Stromberg to the stage to receive the award. Thank you. Gratis. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Now, I forgot the microphone. That's live television. Thank you. Congratulations. And here. Well done. Thank you. Ola, just give us a few words on behalf of the Swedish Ski Association on what Snow Kids is all about. We so often talk about Olympics, World Championships, medals, World Cups. But this is the little ones. This is the future. 
Yeah, I think for us this is the ground for making the success at the world championship levels and the Olympics level, of course. If we don't bring kids to snow, we will not have any champions on the elite level. So it's very, very important for us. We want to create a lot of interest with winter sports and with this program, we really do. So we're very happy for the award. It creates a lot of awareness. We get publicity and we get more kids on snow thanks to this also. So thank you so much. Ola, thank you for being with us today. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, Snow Kids 2022. So we get down to what most of us have come here this evening to see, talk about and learn about the uh, World Championship candidates for 26 and 20, uh, 27. I would like you to have a look at the candidate clip for the Ski Flying World Championships of 2026. Johan, tell us who the 2026 Ski Flying FIS World Championships mm. are. Mm -hmm. Excitement is building up. <laughs> this was very tight election. <laughs> oh. And the winner is Oberstorf. And if Florian Stern and Angela Avitala could come to the stage, please. Well done. Well done. Congratulations. And good luck with the preparations. Congratulations. Brilliant news. It'll be the seventh time Oberstorf has hosted the Ski Flying World Championships. Do you remember the first one? And how are the preparations coming on for the seventh? So uh, for the first one, I think I'm a little bit too young, <laughs> but um, I remember the last one in 2018, and it was a great experience. And we are very happy to host uh, the World Championships in 2026 again. So thank you for the election. I think preparations are just, yeah, now going on. And yeah, we're very excited and proud to be part of this team. Florian, tell us a little bit about the facilities the crowds, many of us remember huge crowds, phenomenal crowds, watching your last World Championships in Oberstdorf. What do you learn from hosting so many, and how do you take that forwards into the future? Yeah, the past events was great, like the Nordic World Championships and also Ski Flying uh, 2018. We have good crowds, um, and we are very um, uh, excited uh, to have the international crowds uh, back again, because as you know, the past years was not so good. But so we are very excited for the future. Um, Oberstdorf has great sport facilities. The Heine Klopfer ski flying hill at the moment, one of four of its kinds. And we have big support from the municipality of Oberstdorf, from the ski club Oberstdorf, but also from the Allgäu region. Um, all the people are quite excited uh, for the next World Championships in Oberstdorf. So yeah, we're excited and uh, see what's coming. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a round of applause, hosting the seventh time, Oberstdorf and the FIS Ski Flying World Championships 2026. Sounds good, doesn't it? Shall I take the microphone before the picture? Doesn't look good in the photo. So before I move stages again, I would like to move on to the 2027 Freestyle Skiing World Championships and please enjoy this candidate video.
So, Johan, please, your duties with the envelope. You'll never open a birthday card again after this evening, <laughs> I can promise. And again, another very hard fought competition. And the winner is Montafon. Christian Speckle and uh, Peter Marco, welcome to the stage. Congratulations. 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 Can I hand you the microphone? Uh, gentlemen, I've got a couple of quick questions for you here. Uh, in terms of medals, the Freestyle World Championships is the, the largest medal count of all of the uh, FIS family. Tell us a little bit about how you've been preparing because the Freestyle Skiing World Championships engulf so many of our sports now. It's going to be a very big event. We are really proud and we are happy to host this event. And I tell you, we are holding World Cup events since 2012. And ever since, one or two or three uh, athletes from the Montafon locals were attending. And last Olympic Games, our Itzi Hemmerle, our local, our Montafon Itzi, won the gold medal. So we know how to handle the event and we know the sport. We are ready for it. <laughs> Gentlemen, tell us a little bit about the facilities uh, that need to be, be created and, and tell us a little bit about how that lift system will, will cope with such a big event. I'm sure, Peter, you know exactly how it works. Well, the thing is, we split it up to five different venues. Um, we are hosting some uh, World Cups on different venues so far, but we are building up some new ones, uh, even the Halfpipe, which is not in Montafon. So um, we are trying to create uh, a new level for the World Champs. It's not an easy way just to be the only one yeah. uh, for the announcement. That brings us to a next level, uh, which is the aim for us and the motivation. So uh, we are really looking forward for 27. Uh, congratulations to both of you. Not since 2015 have Austria hosted World Freestyle, and it's back in Montfon 2027. Congratulations. Ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause for the 2027 Freestyle World Championships. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Don't worry, sir, not too many envelopes to do. We've just got a few more to go. I would like to uh, introduce another clip for you. This time, the uh, winning bid to host the 2027 FIS Nordic World Championships. History and tradition, future innovations and responsibility. In Fallen, we always have both the ambition and power to take the lead. We want to make a difference for future generations and inspire and promote health and movement. Are you ready? For what? Holland 2027. Yes! <laughs> so it's another one that's not a very difficult decision. Johan, I leave you to the Unveiling of the envelope. And the winner is... Fallon. I'd like to introduce to the stage Ulrike back Eriksson and Tigerstrom Monfeld from the Fallon Organising Committee. Ladies, Gratulera. congratulations. Gratulera. So, gratis igen. <laughs> Can I give you the microphone? Yep. So if my calculations are correct, ladies, fifth time for Fallon hosting a world championship. It's almost as if you're in a competition with Oberstorf, who's going to win as we keep going on and on and on. But what I'm trying to get to, a lot of experience, a lot of knowledge that I'm sure you've had handed on from previous organising committees. Tell us a little bit about the preparation. Tell us a little bit about the bid process. But most importantly, tell us when you're going to be ready. OK. Uh, <laughs> we are ready now. <laughs> we are actually ready to start working towards 27. And uh, we are so happy and so proud of this announcement. So. 
Thank you all. And uh, of course, all of you, welcome to Fallen in 27. And of course, for those people, because we've got a lot of viewers uh, who are tuning in to uh, Fisky.com right now, uh, what have you as a big team gone through to get to this point in the process? A lot of presentations and more. Just give us a little bit of the background of it's not just a question of writing Mr. Eliash a letter. Uh, me and Ulrika actually was a part of the executive team in 2015. So we have known each other for quite a while now and we have done a lot of preparations back home. We have a strong support back in Falun in Dalarna and Sweden and we know some of them are actually watching now. So we are super happy to share this moment with them. Yes, if you're watching in Falun right now, we can hear the roar here in Milan. But most importantly, to all of your team, front and backstage. Congratulations. It's a fantastic achievement. Thank you. Thank you. Photo. Yep. So far, so good, Johan. I'm, I'm happy to report that the next envelope that you have to open has four candidates in it and will give us the answer to the uh, 2027 candidate winners for the Alpine Ski Racing Championships for that year. Um, could you give us a little bit of your personal perspective on how that bid process happens? I think we should be really, really proud of our, uh, this bid process because we had four fantastic bids. Uh, I always said, we need to try new things. And whilst two of the bids is going back to very iconic ski resorts, they try new concepts. And that is important, that we try new things. So we should give all four candidates a big round of applause. Johan, and, thank you. And I, if I may add, and I say this, that there are four winners here tonight. But like in ski racing, only one can win. And I tell the, threes, the three bids that didn't win that they should keep bidding. Keep bidding, because you all had excellent bids. Well, to all of you here right now and to all of you viewers tuning in, Decide for yourselves who do you think should be hosting the World Alpine Ski Racing Championships for 2027. Please take a look at these videos. Tom Montana is now ready to organize the 2027 FIS World Ski Championships. This exactly 40 years after the amazing World Championships 1987. I'm delighted to see magical images of the Swiss Alps traveling around the world. Crom Montana 2027, relive the magic. Everything packed in one place. From steep alpine mountaintops into the great Atlantic Ocean. Skiing in Larvik is one of the most unique, spectacular sceneries you've ever seen. It is about time Norway hosted the Alpine World Championship. Larvik 2027, an experience north of the ordinary.
So I'm sure you all agree for fabulous ski resorts, for amazing bids. And looking at those videos right now, wouldn't we all just love to nip to any one of those resorts and spend a weekend or a week there? Wouldn't we love to see a World Championships there? But as Johan has quite correctly pointed out, only one person can be the winner. We are ski racers. We are winter sports athletes. It's time for the decision, Johan, and it's down to you. And the winner is Tron Montana. Congratulations to Tron Montana. Well done to Garmisch, Narvik, and Soldeo. But Tron Montana who hosted the World Championships in 1987, will now host the Alpine Ski Racing World Championships in 2027. Brilliant news, gentlemen. Congratulations. Let me give you this microphone. It's a pretty scary moment sitting down there. First of all, please tell everybody in the room, please tell everybody, there are Swiss people cheering all over the country right now. What's going through your mind? How special is that magic moment? Uh, it's it's hard to describe. I mean, I'm I'm overwhelmed. First of all, I want to say thank you very much to the Fisk Council for the trust in us, and hello to Switzerland. Let's party tonight. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's a, it's a huge success for us, and and really we guarantee the best ski alpine world championships ever. I think I can imagine back to 1987. I was 14 years old, and it was really magic. And I think we, we really want to do it again. That's absolutely brilliant. Now, we know Cramontana is one of the highlights of the Women's World Cup Tour. It, it's been such a successful event. It's fair to say almost the classic of the, the Women's Tour. Will we get that magic that we saw in 87 all over again, men and women? And will we see anything new in Cramontana for 2027? Sorry, uh, Nick, but I'm really emotional. I don't think I find the right words because <laughs> I'm really, I'm really, I have tears in my eyes. But I will try to say you uh, and you respond on your questions. Uh, Grands Montana has a big, big tradition of ski alpine, and in '87 we have done an unbelievable, forgettable, also world championship. And you see, Roger Federer, he helped us because he said, really, let's relive this magic of this 87 um, um, worlds. And for me, really, it's a big moment, a really big moment, amazing. It's great because I'm working now 55 years for the Alpine Ski. And this moment, I think I never will uh, yeah, uh, live him, uh, here live on this uh, stage, but it is true, and I can only thank very much to the FIS Council, to the President, and also to the communities of Grands Montana. In the name of the Candidature Committee, I thank really my warmest thanks for everything that you have done, and also the trust you give to us. Uh, I think also we can promise you that we will do outstanding World Championships, really outstanding because we are expecting more than 2,000 uh, spectators in grounds, uh, 2,000, sorry, yeah, 200,000 um, spectators in, um, in, in our resort, and the resort will be ready for absolutely, uh, really ambitious and tremendous uh, world championships. Thanks a lot, and thank you, everybody. Thank you. Gentlemen, congratulations. If you'd like to stand with Johan for... Congratulations. Well, well I think, as Johan said earlier, everybody who has been bidding to host these major championships you're all winners, but only one can take that top position. And I certainly hope to see all of you here again for the next round of bids for future 
major competitions within the FIS family. Johan, congratulations. A lot of envelope opening there, but please uh, give us your last closing words on uh, this very special evening. No, I think, um, again, as I said earlier, this demonstrates the strength that we have within uh, FIS, uh, that we can produce four bids that were so great. Uh, so that <clears throat> we should be really proud over that. Now, I would also like to say welcome everybody uh, and say that, uh, first of all, a big thank you to the host of this evening, the LOC, Milano Cortina. In sport, we like to talk about cycles. And with the dinner today and the Congress tomorrow, we're facing a new cycle. A cycle that would lead us through four World Cup seasons, several World Championships, to the next Olympic Winter Games in Milano Cortina. And last year, we had the pleasure of being in Cortina, and we were treated phenomenally well. So I really look forward to, uh, to uh, going there in four years' time. So, dear Giovanni, uh, the Milano Cortina team, Flavio, the Fisi team, which always does a phenomenal job in organizing things for us, wherever we are, in Beijing or here in Milano. Thank you so much for having us. And, uh, yeah, we can't wait until uh, 2026. Johan, thank you. Now, we've still got a live TV show going out there. People are still tuning in. We still have a dinner and a celebration to get on with here at the Allianz Tower. I'd like to say thank you to all of our viewers who are outside of Milan right now for tuning in to see this decision. Congratulations to everybody that has taken their awards. Congratulations to you all for all being part of the winter sports family. When the going gets tough, the tough get going, and we're all really trying to get winter sport back after two horrible years. And I think this evening has been a stepping stone in the right direction for us to put winter sport not back on the map, but right on top of the map. On behalf of all of the team, many thanks for your company. And until next time, it's goodbye for now.